All right, so this is the question. Consider an infinitely long wire of charge carrying a positive charge density lambda. And I, I do like to draw, um, draw pictures as I read the question uh, to make sure I understood it and I'm not missing anything. So I have my infinitely long wire and it has charge density lambda. The elect oh, it is telling me the electric field good. So um, I also know what the electric fields will look like. So I'm drawing the side of you. So the electric fields will look like they're moving, going away from this line perpendicular. Um, and you have to be able to imagine that if you took that and kind of looked at it from top, then it'll be, it'll look like it's going radially outward. So you should have that image in your head. And the magnitude of that electric field is two times Coulomb constant times lambda over R. That's what's given here. Um, where R is the yeah, unit vector, that's what I was talking about. Okay. It says, letting the voltage be zero at some reference distance. And this is a, a bit of a new thing, and it is a necessary thing, as I yeah, cover in part B. <laughs> so let me set a distance reference here. And I'm going to say, okay, at that distance, are not, I'm going to say um, my voltage at this distance is equal to zero. That's my reference point. And all the other voltage values are calculated as a difference from here. It says calculate the voltage due to this infinite line of charge at some distance r. At some distance r, let's say this point here, at some distance r from the line of charge. Give your answer in terms of given quantity, okay. So this is a kind of a straightforward application of definition. And um, I think the hardest part in this question is seeing that it is a straightforward application of definition. Once you see it, then it's a pretty easy. <laughs> so, and I guess um, the setup for it could also be challenging. So let me do the setup. So this is how I'm going to apply the definition. And the definition I'm applying is the definition of a voltage difference, that the change in voltage as you go from point A to B is given by integral of minus E dot DL, the line element going from A to B. That's the definition of voltage. And I'm going to be applying that. And in order to apply it, you need a path uh, that takes you from A to B. So this is gonna be my path. Uh, from this point here, where my voltage is equal to zero, so that whatever result I calculate is the voltage, I'm gonna, so that's gonna be my A, and this point, which is at the distance R, is gonna be my B. And when I'm done with the calculation, that'll basically give me the voltage at the distance R. So, so that's my, uh, <laughs> that's my um, uh, setup. There's this path that I'm gonna, be, uh, there's this, path that I'm gonna be following, and I'm just gonna do this integral. And I want you to know a very subtle difference between how this integral is set up and how I did the integral for that other question where I was calculating electric potential due to an extended charge distribution. Even though both uh, methods involve integrals, what those integrals mean are very different. Here, what I am adding the infinitesimal amounts over is this E dot DL, the change in voltage as you uh, move along the path. That's the meaning of the integrand here. In that other question, the meaning of the integrand was actually the contribution to the voltage from an infinitesimal uh, amount of charge. It's, um, so I just wanted to highlight the difference because a lot of times when, um, <laughs> you know, students are faced with a moderately difficult question and someone asks you, how do you approach it? And they say, we use integration. And then my response would be, which integration? Because there are so many, all that integral means, it's uh, something like a Riemann sum. It's where you're adding things up. <laughs> so, um, so when you use integral, um, there are additional meanings you have to imbue to the integral that you are setting up. And that's where your, your own understanding of physics comes to.
So, so let me, um, I guess I can actually set up that integral here. So um, let me try writing out the uh, integral that's defined by this definition of voltage here and see if I run into any issues. So setting that up, what I'm going to be saying is, so my voltage um, at distance R point, at point B, that's going to be integral of, so from point A, so R equals uh, R naught to point B, R equals R, okay, I have a bit of a problem here. Let me turn this R into R prime so that I don't have two different R's running around. R prime is what will be my variable of integration. This R is the variable R that I'll want left standing at the end of the integration. Okay, keep going, uh, minus the electric field so I need to express E dot DL, and that's something that deserves a bit of um, um, a bit of care <laughs> to avoid the sign error. <laughs> so let me let me first write it out, and uh, let me see if I've made the sign error. So the magnitude of electric field is um, two k two Coulomb constant uh, charge density over R and here I want R prime because for like uh, imagine taking a, a representative point here. I want the distance R prime um, for that point, point along the path. It's the electric field at this point that I want. So that's R prime there. And uh, so the, the path element would be the R prime. And what I'm wondering right now is if I need a minus sign or not, because in terms of vectors, E dot DL, you know, electric field points radially outward. It looks like my DL is pointing inward. So it feels as though the dot product will need a minus sign. But what I think I remember is that here, if you look at the integration, my R prime, is going from the larger to smaller value. So I think my dr prime will naturally include that minus sign in the integration procedure. So, so I think I'm actually fine here without an additional minus sign. So that's what I think is right. So that's what I'm gonna go with. What I will say is that this is something that you can check. If you have a good enough intuition, then I think you have an intuition that um, if a voltage at this point was zero, then as you get closer to positive charge, your voltage here should be positive. So, so after I'm done uh, doing this integral, I can check to see if my answer is positive. And if it isn't, then I will figure that I made a sign error and I'll just Correct the sign. <laughs> sign errors are one of the trickiest things to get always 100% right. There's a joke that a good physicist is someone who makes an even number of sign errors. <laughs> and uh, what I will say is that uh, what's important in a situation like this is that you get the correct answer <laughs> and that you are able to recognize the correct answer. So to that extent, if you somehow you know, got the wrong answer because you made a sign error and you are not able to track down where you made a sign error, my recommendation is just make the final sign correct and recognize that you made a sign error somewhere and do fixing that later. <laughs> okay, so voltage at the distance R is, uh, oh, that's an easy integral. That's just uh, the, the natural log. So let me pull out all the constants. It's a uh, minus two K E lambda. Those are all constants. And what my integral is, R prime going from R equals zero to R, and the integrand is one over R prime dr prime. That's just natural. The antiderivative for that is just a natural log of um, natural log of R prime. So let me write that up. Minus two k lambda. The in the antiderivative natural log of R prime 
and I need to evaluate it at the two limits, r prime equals r naught and r. And so, so let me just do that calculation off to the side here. It's going to be natural log of r minus natural log of r naught. And doing that uh, logarithm algebra, you have seen a few times natural log of r over r naught. Okay, and so plugging that in, uh, the expression I have for the potential is minus 2ke lambda times natural log of r over r naught. And for the regions that I, well, uh, for this point here as a drone, I have a, a double negative that's unnecessary. I have a minus sign here. And here, because this ratio is less than one, the natural log of that is negative. So I can go through the logarithm algebra and the end result of the logarithm algebra is that this minus sign is absorbed into the logarithm. And um, in terms of its argument, its argument raised to the power of minus one. So that flips the, that makes the argument reciprocal. So having done all that, the argument should be r naught over r. And when you now consider values of r less than r naught, the logarithm is positive. So my uh, potential will be positive. So that's what assures me that I haven't made a sign error. Or if I did, I made an even number of them. So, <laughs> so that should be the answer here. 2k lambda times natural log of R naught over R. And actually, if you think through this carefully, I hope you also see that um, uh, even though I deliberately pictured R as a, at a value less than R naught, it doesn't actually have to be. If I somehow consider a point out here where um, R is greater than R naught, actually nothing I've done in the derivation changes. Nothing in the derivation explicitly assumes the relative between R and R naught. And with the value of R greater than R naught, what you'll find is that potential is negative, as it should, because it's decreasing from where it is zero. So, oh, and I think that's actually good to know as we are answering here, <laughs> because it's asking, which of the following best describes what happens to potential R as it goes to infinity? So we are considering here as R, you know, so first, as it crosses this point, my potential uh, now becomes negative. So as R continues to increase without limit, what happens is that this ratio will go to zero. So we are looking at natural log of zero. And I hope people have enough familiarity with the natural log to know this, the limit as X goes to zero from positive of natural log of x, uh, it's a negative infinity. Natural log just continues to decrease without a bound. So um, V of r decreases to my negative infinity without limit. That should be the answer. And, and that's really why we can set our, set the infinity as the reference point, because <laughs> you know, it's, you are, now trying to add infinities. And that's, a, that's not an exercise I recommend for any lower division course. You know, just stay away from infinities. There are upper division math courses that are designed to deal with the infinities. So, um, 